Hey guys, I'm back again doing another Jurassic World Dino Rivals Battle at Big Rock Tour review. So we're going to be taking a look at the Pseudoceratops. And once again, we're back on QH Films since this is the last of the three reviews posted for here for the figures he has owned. Yes, he owns the Pseudoceratops. I haven't owned my own yet, but I will definitely go and get one. It is an amazing figure, as I can tell. But before we go and look at this figure, we're going to have to look at the package first, considering that this one is the uh, standard Battle at Big Rock version of the package that we usually get for Jurassic World. It doesn't have Owen Grady on there. It has the more purplish blue setting down here and the Battle at Big Rock sticker over there with the demonstration of the dinosaur, what it can do from here and at the back showing a pretty glamorous picture of the figure itself, the prototype of it whipping the concavenator and all that and then you got the wait hold on is that a concavenator yeah it's the original concavenator for some random reason because there's the repaint down there and the allosaurus over here which we've already reviewed on this particular channel so enough with the package already let's go ahead and take a look at the figure starting off that wonderful head sculpt as you can see it is brilliantly sculpted but the only flaws that are very apparent is basically how the paint is kind of implemented but aside from the paint being implemented in such a weird way, there are some really great sculpt work on this. I mean, you can obviously see the beak from there, and like see the mouth from here. The eyes are obviously really tiny. You have to spot them, and I can't really get them that great on autofocus if I can. So as you can see, you see that black dot, that means that's basically the eye right there. So it's basically the beadiest eyes of all time, so dang small. But aside from that, this is really cool. You see the ridges again, the sculpt detailing on here, and this is pretty flexible. It's actually a lot more flexible than a regular Triceratops. And these horns, these really great horns are sculpted in, but they're not really sculpted in, they're sculpted separately, but that's what they look like. Again, this dinosaur looks amazing. Again, sculpt work, going through that head sculpt. Again, the paint is kind of the lacking ideology, but despite that, it just still looks great. There's the nostrils, the wrinkles, the folds, everything looks really great. And again, you got that beady eye again. You can still see it from there, I guess. Then the sculpt work on here, it's a lot broader and bigger. It's actually either as big as a Cenoceratops or a Packing Rhinoceros. And it's a lot bigger than the Triceratops. And you got the ridges again, the detailing of the, uh, the pebbles and everything. Going down here. Seeing everything about it is just amazing. It's just really one of the best sculpts. Underside. There is some paint underside. It goes on from a little bit from here to there. And right, here's the scan code and the logo from there. So there is paint on the tail from there, but it doesn't continue up from here. There is some green translating from down here and it's pretty faint. Like it can go on all over different places. Paint's kind of all over the place, but despite that, it looks really great. Can't wait to see this, what happens in the actual uh, short. It might be coming soon when Hobson Shaw is out by August or something. Again, this is really an amazing sculpt for the toy. The herbivores always have the most unique sculpts, in my opinion. There are most carnivores that have unique sculpts, and especially more that are coming out in 2020, but this is definitely one of the best. And the action features are straightforward once again. Press the back button will obviously lead to the tail whipping like the Triceratops. And the front one will be the head ramming action. Which actually works a lot better than the Triceratops from the uh, Dino Rivals toy line. And the head's also articulated from here. You can turn it from different angles so you can see how it is. It's not really loose but it's definitely it definitely works from there. And I guess I stand corrected about the um, Cenoceratops or Pachyrhinoceros being exactly the same size as the Pseudoceratops because it's a lot more bulkier. So the Triceratops is still almost the same size, but it's al it's almost dwarfed by these two. So these two definitely look really great together. It's just that the Triceratops is definitely dwarfed by it. If you even know, I think the Triceratops might be a little bit bigger. And here it is right up against the small Styracosaurus again. I have no idea why it's that small, so that's just basically a juvenile. And here it is, right up against the Arch Nemesis, the Allosaurus, which we've already reviewed. And so far, it's standing up pretty fine. Here's an Pseudoceratops collector's card, and it looks very great. It's kind of strange, a little bit, that it uh, has the 
It has two circles on here. I don't think that's the original figure. Okay, the original figure, it can be very faint. I just never went into detail. There's like these circle-ish, uh, I mean these round areas here. It's very faint. It's not really shown that much, but it's clearly shown on this figure card. But aside from that, it looks really great. So, it actually, I think this looks a lot better. Again, it's much like the Allosaurus when the collector card looks better than the figure. Okay, I will say this. It's just as good. It's in a blue background, so it's pretty nice. I don't even know what to make my dang mind up, so <laughs> this is really good. And down here is as it's basically as aggressive and strong as the Triceratops, but again, it's four percent at speed and three percent at brains. And here's the back, which is the Dino Rivals Jurassic World trademark logos and the background that reminds me of Jurassic Park Three. You know the drill. And there is the Nasutoceratops killing the Allosaurus. I don't know who will win in this battle, but I'm just gonna go and bet on the Nasutoceratops because it looks pretty freaking cruel. I actually like this Nasutoceratops better than the Allosaurus because the Allosaurus, while it is great, it does sport its issues. Like, I think it's more problematic than the Nasutoceratops. So, yeah, that's basically gonna be it for this figure review. Hope you guys enjoyed that review, and I'll be seeing you guys later. And thanks for tuning in to QH Films for these reviews.